T-Rex Breakout. This is LEGO set 76956. It consists of 1212 pieces and was released in April 2022 for about 100 euros. If you want to get the set nowadays, you have to pay, uh, pay for a set in used condition about 80 euros. Maybe if you are lucky, you can find it for 70 euros. If you want to get the set still sealed, you have to pay about 100 to 110 euros. I was lucky, I got my set in used condition for 55 euros, but I bought it already over a year ago, I think. Maybe the prices back then were lower. And I also have to mention that it came without stickers, which means I had to get the stickers from Bricklink, which did cost me additional 5 euros. That's a bit much for those stickers, you can get them for less, but since I already had a bigger order from the same seller, I didn't want to produce new shipping costs by ordering the stickers somewhere else, so I paid a bit more for the stickers, but uh, I guess in total this was the cheaper solution. As you can see, our set depicts uh, the famous scene from the first Jurassic Park movie where the T-Rex escaped from its habitat and, yeah, attacks the vehicles. I'm really looking forward to build the set. I'm not only a huge fan of the original Jurassic Park movie, I also like that we get to see some new pieces in the set here, or at least pieces which I haven't used before. That's cool. Oh, and there's something interesting. It's not only that the set comes with a Jurassic Park um, license, it also comes with a Ford license. So we really get to see little Fords here. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, then let's have a look at uh, the back side of the box. I think there isn't too much to say about the box in general. But when we have a look at the back side of the box, we can see a little still image from the movie. Of course, from the same scene which our Lego set depicts. More pictures of the completed build. And we get to know about uh, something, something about dimensions. So our set is going to be 58.5 centimeters by 15.5 centimeters. The third dimension sadly is missing. All right, then let's get out the bricks. Inside the box, we find this 16 by 16 plate in dark tan. And yeah, as you can see, it comes with this injection mark on the middle of the plate itself. I'm not a huge fan of positioning those um, marks on the plate itself. I would prefer if uh, the injection mark was on one of the studs. And it's always better to simply have only an injection point and not those yeah injection holes. But it's fine, I think. Then, of course, we got a lot of bricks. They don't come any longer in their original bags since, yeah, my set is used. And then we got the manual, the building instructions. I like that we get to see this uh, jungle design on the covers, on the front and on the back. When we open the instructions, first of all, we get to know the um, the designers of the set. And <laughs> then we get to know how uh, a brick separator works. Mine is somewhere in here in the stack. Yeah, there it is. And after that, we get to know that there are nine separate building sections. Well, 
This doesn't help much in my case because my set is used, so the bricks aren't pre-sorted to those individual building steps any longer. I don't have numbered bags. I got all my bricks in the same bag. Normally with a brick count of over a thousand pieces I tend to uh, pre-sort my bricks by type. But I don't know. I think 1200 pieces is, is still manageable. And I'm simply not in the mood to uh, sort all those bricks today. So I'm simply go going to empty this bag on the table here. And yeah, then I will. Um, have a look or then I will have to search for all the bricks at uh, the individual building steps. When you have pre-sorted them it's easier so you won't waste too much time during the building process to look for an individual brick at each step but I guess 1200 bricks is still manageable so I'm going to empty the bag now and then I will start with uh, page 8 Step one. Well, this table here isn't big enough for all the pieces. So I picked out the bigger plates. So I got this bowl here with uh, yeah, a mixture of all plates that are bigger than three by three. And this is a bowl with plates bigger than um, two by four but that's all i simply invested five minutes for this and yeah i think these are at least how much pieces are those are those maybe 150 pieces but the table looks way emptier now and I think this helps a lot during the building process, so these five minutes really were worth investing. But now let's start with step one on page eight. I will come back to you as soon as I see something interesting or something doesn't work as shown in the instructions, which I doubt. <laughs> page 11, step nine. I get to meet my first unknown piece. This particular mudguard was introduced by LEGO in 2018 and appeared in over 40 sets so far. But for me this is the first set which contains this piece. Page 14, step 15. Have a look at this huge jumper plate here. It looks like two 2x2 two two jumper plates glued together. Hmm. This piece was introduced in 2020, but already appeared in over 260 sets so far. Crazy. Page 18, step 23. We just have placed the first of the stickers. We built a monitor with the help of uh, this 2x2 two two slope and a sticker. And normally I am quite bad at placing stickers, but I think I did a great job here. <laughs> it looks very well. Sadly, there is still an awful lot of stickers to place in future steps. Wish me luck that uh, I will place them as well as I did with this one here. Alright, following page 19, we got a whole page dedicated to that monitor we just have created. So you can see here we got uh, our build and there is a little image which uh, yeah, zooms in on the monitor that we just have built. And down here we got a little info box with of course information about the monitor and still from the movie. Without this image, I wouldn't hear. I wouldn't have even noticed it. But uh, let's compare this monitor with the monitor that we just have built. I think the monitor in the movie looks way blockier than what we did here. Our monitor looks better, but if we want to be true to the movie, we shouldn't have used a slope, but maybe we should have 
better used a normal 2x2 two two brick. Hmm. Page 25. After placing more stickers and uh, assembling those two minifigures here, we have completed the first building section. Now it's time to start with building section 2. Page 32, step 44. We have created a little brick built flashlight and I think it really looks cool. It could even be a little video camera. And I'm not the only one who thinks it's cool. Lego itself also thinks it's cool. And because of that, we got a whole page dedicated to that flashlight. After completing step 59 on page 40, we get to see another info box because we just have recreated the most iconic classes of water in movie history. Page 44, step 68. In this step we are using this windscreen here and it's a piece I haven't seen before. This windscreen actually first appeared in this set here and two months later it appeared in an Ninjago set and since then it only appeared in two other sets which uh, makes four sets in total where we can find this piece here. That makes it quite a rare piece. Hmm. With step 70 on page 46 we have completed the first Ford Explorer which is surprisingly huge and after another info box there is only this Ian Malcolm minifigure left to assemble. When we have done that we have completed the second building section. Now it's time to start with the third building section in which we are going to assemble the T-Rex. Page 50, step 5. In this step we are using another piece which I think I haven't used before. What is it? It's yeah, it's a Technic brick with these two rotation joint sockets added. This piece was introduced in 2006 and appeared in over 100 sets so far. Page 67, step 46. We have completed uh, the dinosaur's torso and tail. There isn't much to say about this. Um, the construction was quite easy. For some reason we used orange pieces on the inside of this thing, but uh, there's not much more to say about it. Well, with step 46 we have completed the third building section. And now it's time to continue with the fourth building section. Page 83, step 88. We are building one of the dinosaur's feet at the moment. And here is another piece which is new to me. This plate modified here with those handlebars. The piece was introduced in 2011 and appeared in over 160 sets so far. Page 88, step 100. We have completed the fourth building section. This is what our dinosaur looks like so far. In the next building section we are going to add the head and arms. Page 93, step 112. This here is the most awful sticker we have to place so far. So, it's sticker number 10, which is this one. We have to place this eye here on that tiny, slopey part. Oh dear, let's see if I can do this. Hmm, I could have done this better. Page 96, step 120. Applying the second sticker with the eye didn't work much better. Mm, damn it. Page 102, step 135. 
the T-Rex is completed. And it's quite a huge fella we got here. Rawr. Rawr. <laughs> it looks quite cool. Well, next we got another info page about the dinosaur and then we have to assemble Dr. Grant, which I have already done. And yeah, then we get some information about, I think it's about the whole scene which we are building here. And then we have completed the fifth building section. Now it's time for the sixth building section in which we are assembling the diorama itself in which we can place our minifigures and the dinosaur, the uh, fort, and here, here are the other minifigures. You might have wondered why the whole time I was also mentioning the page numbers. Well, here is the reason why. With the sixth building step, the uh, building section, the uh, steps start with number one again. So the first step is number one and yeah, then we go on with all the other numbers. Page 136, step 33. We have completed the most important part of the base and with this we also have completed building section number 6. And have a look at this, how huge it is. Of course I have read the dimensions on the box, but for some reason I didn't visualize how huge this diorama is going to be. I think it's the biggest Lego diorama I have built so far. Okay, then let's go on with building section number 7 where we add some stuff to the base. Page 154, step 48. With assembling this little sign here, which also needs a sticker, and reading another info box, we have completed building section 7. This is how our base looks right now. Let's continue with the 8th building section. Page 187, step 97. This zip line here is another piece which I haven't used before. Lego introduced it in 2017 and since then it appeared in over 50 sets. You can see for the step here we used 6 of those zip lines. Page 188, step 98. After applying a few more stickers and another info box, we have completed building section 8. Now it's time for building section 9, the last building section. Page 199, step 128. With placing sticker number 20, we have applied all of the stickers and I'm really happy that we are done with the stickers. There are 21 different stickers, but uh, there are more stickers than only those 21. You can see that, for example, number 7 has got two stickers and also number 19, number 14 and number 17. This means in total there are 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 stickers. Oh, damn it, I really hate stickers. Page 212, step 160. This is uh, this build's final step. We only have to place these two tiles here. And for once, they are printed. We don't have to apply stickers, thank God. And have a look at this tile here. I really like this print. This Jurassic Park logo just looks amazing. That's cool. Well, after we have placed those two tiles, we get to see another, another info box in the instructions and 
After that, the only thing left to do is um, placing all the stuff we have built so far on the base. So we have to place the dinosaur, the two vehicles, and the minifigures. And when we have done that, then we are through with the instructions. All right, then let's have a look at the build. And this thing really is huge. It's way bigger than it than I expected it to be when I started with the build. That's just great. It's, it's a huge diorama. <laughs> well, as I said before, we got uh, these two printed tiles here, no stickers, with the logo and, yeah, a quote by him, Ian Malcolm. And yeah, for some reason there is no tile above those, uh, above the, this, what is it? I think it's a brick. Let me have a look. Yeah, it's, it's, oh, those are two brick modifieds. And yeah, for some reason the studs are visible, not covered by tiles, but that's fine. I think you can place a minifigure there if you want to. And there are so many details, it's just amazing. This little detail here, the sign uh, so appears also in the movie. We get to see the dinosaur's footprints. Of course, they look a bit differently than the dinosaur's feet, but I think it's close enough. And of course, the dinosaur itself. The T-Rex is so huge, it's just amazing. But we're going to have a look at that dinosaur later. Let's begin with, yeah, where to begin with? With the vehicle which isn't turned over. So you can see it isn't interlocked with the base. It only sits here and stays in place due to uh, those two slopes and yeah, the plates and uh, tiles here in the back. And I think this isn't really a problem, but theoretically it also can't move in this direction because it's held in place or at least stopped at some point by yeah, this rail, which we also see in the movie, the rail uh, along which the vehicles drive. But let's have a look inside the vehicle now. Or let's start with the outside. You can see a lot of stickers, but this Ford Explorer really is a cool vehicle and it's quite huge. Have a look here, there's a minifigure. It's not a small car. And I like how they did the wipers here. <laughs> That's a neat idea. So we can remove the roof. And then we are able to, yeah, to place minifigures inside and whatever. And you can also see that there are many details which we saw in the movie. So this um, touch screen here cups of water, the light back here, that's very cool. And here we got Ian Malcolm, you can see he's got a, one of those torches in his hand. And uh, yeah, the minifigure is wet. <laughs> I think it was raining heavily when I remember correctly in the movie and that scene. But what I don't like so much about this minifigure is that uh, the color of his chest is completely different than uh, yeah, the rest of the color of his skin. So his head and his hands are in a way more intense nougat color or whatever this is called than, uh, than his chest is. Yeah, this print could be better. And I also don't like that Ian Malkin comes with two faces. This means you can't use this minifigure hat without a hairpiece, a helmet, and so on. That always annoys me a bit. 
Okay, what's next? Let's have a look at Dr. Grant. I think he's also quite wet because of the weather. He also got a torch and he got his, got his cool head. And he comes with only one face. That's cool. And if you don't want to place uh, this cowboy hat, whatever, on him, you can also use this hair piece here. And with the hair piece, he looks like this. All right, let's go on the other two minifigures, the kids. In, um, in the movie, the boy is younger, is older than the girl, but uh, when I remember correctly in the book, the boy was uh, the older one. Hmm. Okay, the kids are dirty from the mud. And I like the girl's hairpiece. That's quite cool. <laughs> and they also come with completely muddy arms, or at least one of the arms of each minifigure. That's funny. And you can see both of them also come with two faces. And we also got this little helmet here, which we saw in the movie. And yeah, I think the boy was playing with that thing, if I remember correctly. And then he looks like this. I think it was Night Vision or something. I can't really remember. I haven't seen the movie in a while. Even so, it's one of my absolutely favorite movies. <laughs> And now let's have a look at uh, the star of this Lego set here, the T-Rex. This guy is quite huge. We can move its uh, tail. You can see it's uh, made out of these several segments. Of course, it's a bit stupid when you got these segments because we got these gaps. But it also means that we can move the whole tail, and that's quite cool. Also, his mouth is movable. <laughs> that's amazing. I like his tongue and his teeth. That's really cool. And, of course, a T-Rex got its tiny arms. We are uh, placing this dinosaur on uh, in this position here wasn't too easy, it wasn't difficult, but uh, it took me a while to place it perfectly. You can see that uh, the whole dinosaur got these, uh, yeah, these uh, movable legs and arms but uh, the only important part here are the legs of course and you can move the legs in, in different angles so not only uh, like this here up and down so you can see now the dinosaur is taking a shit or whatever <laughs> But uh, the legs are also movable in this direction. And of course the feet themselves are also movable in various angles. And that's quite cool. Due to this you can place the dinosaur in the most stupid uh, positions, poses. That's, <laughs> that's quite funny. 
The only thing I don't like about dinosaur so much is uh, that the eyes are stickers and I don't know. It looks a bit strange. Oh damn it. The hat has gone. I decapitated it. Here's the hat. It looks a bit strange when the brown of the sticker differs a bit from uh, these brown bricks behind. Well. Okay, then let's get back to the diorama. What else can we see here? We got uh, the turned over vehicle. There is not much to see. But for some reason we also got uh, the rail down here, even though it's not visible. And then we got the fence here in the back. There are fewer uh, cables, than, uh, wires than in the movie, but uh, I think it's absolutely visible what this wants to be. It's definitely this electrical fence, which got destroyed by the dinosaur. We also got here those uh, lights on the top. More of those signs. Sadly, all of those things are stickers. And all the plants in the background. I think it would look cool if there were way more plants. If the whole thing was a bit greener in the background. So that you can't look through the whole thing so much. But it's alright. Maybe there is a mock somewhere on Reprickable which... Uh, Gives an idea how to place more plants there. And have a look at this little detail here. <laughs> this is so cool. It's, um, yeah, this chain here is where uh, the goat was in the movie, which uh, was eaten by the dinosaur. That's a nice little detail. And I also like the building technique, how they managed to uh, build this fence in this angle. You can see that we can move those posts, but when it, it's, uh, yeah, it's just movable like this, and it just looks like in a movie. It's, <laughs> it's great. The only thing I really don't like much about the set is that there are way too many stickers. Stickers everywhere and it's just annoying to place them. And also the quality of the stickers isn't the best. When we have a close look at those stickers, I hope it is visible with the camera, you can see that the print isn't perfect. You can see, uh, we can see all these lines here, especially in those yeah, what's this color in this brownish orange things uh, thing here? It's the print just doesn't look so good. Or oh, the sticker, the print of the sticker. Oh, and also I almost forgot to mention it. Have a look here at uh, the interior of the vehicle where we uh, are supposed to place the minifigures. It doesn't work so well because a minifigure looks like this from the back. You can see we got uh, these four holes here, or better said, these two holes and then these two more or less half holes, so four negative studs in total. And yeah, it looks like we could place two minifigures here, but to do this, we have to place them slightly off the center of the whole of uh, how they would normally be aligned. You can see this is how they get interlocked, but uh, now he doesn't sit in front of, uh, of the steering wheel. Or we can also we can place them like this. And once again, he isn't centered in front of the steering wheel. The same problem is over here with uh, the touchscreen. 
that's just a bit annoying. It's less annoying on this side, but uh, on the left side with the steering wheel, it really looks strange. But that's just a minor problem, I think. I won't have too close of a look inside this vehicle once uh, the roof is back up on the thing. And yeah, I had much fun building this thing. When I don't think about the stickers, I really like the set and it's just cool. But I uh, would buy it used. It's 100 euros is a bit too much for this thing, even so it's quite huge. But I think 70 euros is a good price. And once I have reassembled everything here, it really looks cool. And it's the biggest Lego diorama I have built so far. I just noticed that I placed uh, the wrong heads on the kids. The girl got the boy's face and the other way around. Let me just correct this. So let's decapitate her. And decapitate him. <laughs> That's quite brutal. Then her head goes here. We also have to remove the hairpiece. This is his head. She got that hairpiece and this is his hairpiece. And now we can place the minifigures back in the diorama where they belong. The girl goes back here and uh, I think this here is the boy's place, this brown slope. And now everything should be correct. Yeah, now everything is all right. 